Guess, Lee, my question to you is, uh, what is going on with some credit card companies right now amidst this pandemic that folks should know about? Uh, they're they're hedging with their risk. So the first quarter of the year uh, was a very, very uh, bad quarter for all types of lending institutions, especially credit card issuers. Uh, unsecured credit cards uh, pose a lot of risk, and so they are reining out a lot of people's credit limits. And the CARD Act says that they have to give you 45 days advance notice whenever they're going to do certain things like uh, changing your APR and, uh, as well as other things. But one of the things that they're not required to do is they don't have to tell you that they're lowering your credit limit. And that can happen like in a moment's notice and be totally unexpected. A uh, perfect example of that today had a client that had a $10,000 credit limit that was reduced to $500 credit limit. And she had over a $2,000 balance. So now she's way over her limit on her credit report. And it tanked her credit scores over 100 points overnight. I didn't know that they could do that uh, after the fact. Essentially, you, your limit was A, and then it was reduced to B, and then uh, you're, you're over your, your limit. I did not know the credit card companies had that sort of uh, power, and they could literally wave a, a magic wand and adversely affect you like that. Yes, you're exactly right. And, you know, and historically, they haven't gone to those great lengths. Usually, if somebody has that 2000 or $2,500 balance, Usually, if they reduce a credit limit, it's usually to like five thousand or maybe to twenty five hundred. Um, but it, that instance that I gave you today is not the first time that we've seen that um, over the last several weeks. It's uh, happening more and more frequently, and that's also because they have the ability in the terms of their agreement to check your credit as a soft inquiry, so they can see uh, the rest of your other spending habits. So if they see risky behavior, not just with themselves, but maybe on other accounts that you have then they can rein in your uh, credit limits. And the other impact that that has on you is that it really makes it difficult for that consumer to go out to obtain a loan right. uh, that's, that they could use to pay the balances down to do a debt consolidation with because maybe now they don't qualify elsewhere. What's the motivation of doing this, Lee, from your perspective? Just, just completely just hedging their risk. They're just basically wanting to stop lending privileges to certain uh, borrowers that they have. It's not happening to everybody. The rich get richer and the poor get poorer. Same thing holds true right now. It's the credit rich get richer and the credit poor get poorer. There's a big divide where credit scores are going in one direction or the other, and a lot of it has to do with uh, what they're doing with the credit limits. Lee Kendrick, a debt and credit expert with us, uh, credituturn.com, credit, the letter U, turn.com, uh, joining us here on KDKA Radio, uh, having him on the air because uh, I was reading some articles, uh, particularly from Yahoo Finance, that uh, COVID-19 may have quietly cut your credit card limit and credit score, uh, essentially at a time when, Lee, uh, people are going to, to need that fail-safe, a lot of uh, people have credit cards as their emergency fund, or if uh, you know the, they need to put a new roof on, or a water line breaks, or something along those lines. That's sort of what the credit card is. But basically, what you're saying is that it's very plausible that uh, credit card companies have have uh, taken that limit and lowered it in some way, shape, or form. Um, and there's no uh, the, 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 there's no heads up. There's no literature on that. So uh, having said that, Lee, um, what do you do if this is happening to you, or if you're just curious, you have a credit card? What, what advice would you give? I'm just telling everybody right now. I'm just trying to get the word out there that anybody that has any balances on credit cards that you know one of the, this time, even though the Dow is finally rebounding again. You really need to take a good, close look at your balance situation and to determine whether or not it's worthwhile for you to use some of your cash reserves or even maybe something that you've set aside for other investments to uh, cash those out to pay those balances down so that you're not identified as, as being one of those people they need to rein in uh, credit privileges on. And really, that holds more uh, truth for people that already have excellent credit. People that have an average or just a good or maybe a poor credit rating, um, they're probably at more risk than somebody that has excellent credit just because they're going to be targeted more uh, as far as reducing those credit limits go. So, you know, you just really need to uh, determine where you want to have your cash at. Do you want to have it? 
uh, readily available to you or being used as investments or do you want to pay your balances down? And I'm telling everybody they need to take a good close look at paying those down because, you know, you work really, really hard to get the credit rating that you get. And if we all just go back and remember what it was like to get started whenever we were 18 or 21 or 22, trying to first start building credit and you really didn't have a roadmap to great credit, you don't want to go back and try to do that whenever you're 50 something or 60 something. So, you know, definitely encourage you to take a look at your cash reserves and uh, see what you can do to uh, pay down balances and kind of uh, prevent this from happening to you. Lee, uh, how did you uh, get turned on? I mean, obviously, this is what you do as a credit expert, and you run credituturn.com. Uh, how did you uh, get, get hip to, to this news that credit card companies were doing this or, or started doing this again? I suppose it's something that, uh, that they reserve to do per the terms and conditions of the agreement, but uh, that it was actually put into uh, force here, if you will. When did you learn that? So we're in a very unique uh, position. The platform that uh, I created and developed, uh, the Credit U-Turn, is very consumer protection driven. Uh, We're more of a credit monitoring company than anything else, but we also give all of our users a automated solution that allows them to manage their credit, also to manage uh, dispute processes uh, that don't void or restrict their rights to go after the credit agencies if there are federal um, uh, legal violations. Uh, uh, Fair Credit Reporting Act says that there are certain things that the credit agencies must do and cannot do. So we give our users a way to, to do that, and we're very data-driven. So we have an idea. You know, We don't track people on a cellular level like uh, personal identification, and this person has this and that person has that. So we have a forum where our users can communicate um, amongst each other as well as directly to us. And so just sometimes they'll reach out to us and say, hey, this is what we're facing. This is what we're seeing. And a lot of them uh, go behind the scenes. A lot of them just message and message and message. And we really try to get them to participate within that community-based uh, system. Uh, but, we're, but we're seeing more and more of those messages with more frequency now. And there's a lot of concern out there amongst our users. And I'm also seeing that elsewhere on the Internet and other credit uh, forums. Well, let me ask you this. Uh, do you have any idea? Are you able to quantify that? Is it, you know, 20% of credit card holders have had their, their rate slashed? Do you, you don't have it quantified on, on that level, do you? Um, I, I wish that I could say that just across the U.S. as far as the data goes, and, and I can't determine that. You know, it would be very remiss of me to say that, hey, we've seen this percentage amongst our subscribers because even though it's a pretty good size sampling, I can't say that it's large enough to actually be, um, uh, what I want to say, a, a good snapshot of what it's like across regions or across the entire country. Um, and, uh, you know, I certainly want to, wouldn't want to face any legal uh, repercussions from any credit agencies or any creditors saying, hey, that's, uh, where are you getting those statistics or that's false data. So uh, I'd like to stay away from that one, but I do see that it is happening uh, with growing frequency. And it's not something that's going to stop anytime soon because, um, if anything, there have been some good indicators uh, recently. Uh, where it seems like some people now uh, with the CARES Act money and having maybe some additional income that they weren't used to, maybe they worked in fast food and they've been uh, unemployed or furloughed and they're receiving unemployment benefits plus CARES Act benefits, and if they pay credit cards, they're actually using some of those monies to actually pay down their credit card balances, which is very unique. Not everybody is doing that, obviously. There are some people that are having to live on their credit cards or work, um, but uh, the big telling factor uh, from all this is going to be after the CARES Act money stops. Whenever that stops, uh, I think that we're going to see a bankruptcy explosion that's unlike anything that we've ever seen. Uh, so, you know, the bankruptcy numbers from April of last year uh, compared to April of this year, April of this year was down 46%. But, again, that's because there was a lot of money that all of a sudden got pumped into sure. uh, a lot of people's hands that they weren't used to having. But they're saying that once the CARES Act uh, provisions run out and forbearance agreements expire and payment deferral 
arrangements expire that um, bankruptcy attorneys are really gearing up for a uh, big explosion of bankruptcy filings over the next year to two years. Yeah, tidal wave, you you would certainly think. Uh, COVID-19 may have uh, quietly cut your credit card limit and subsequently your score as we continue our conversation with uh, Lee Kendrick, debt and credit expert to credituturn.com, his, his website. While we don't know uh, what percentage or we can't necessarily quantify uh, how much or, or more of, of this has gone on, uh, we do anecdotally. Uh, you, you can tell, Lee, through, through your expertise that this is happening with more frequency. Can you, can you tell me, even if it's anecdotally, uh, if there is a credit card company that is more prone to do this, does Visa do it more than MasterCard? Who does it more than American Express? Who does it more than, you know, D, E, or F credit card company? Um, I, again, I just think that unilater unilaterally across the board um, is it, very much that way. So it, it, I can't speak to it being any one specific company. But I can tell you right now that if you have increased your spending activity in any way, shape, form, fashion over the last few months, just keep in mind that they have the ability to pull a soft inquiry on your credit uh, history and look at that as well as not only just watch to see how you're spending your money. If they see cash advances all of a sudden um, in comparison to you just buying basic necessities, uh, th there are certainly indicators that you just need to look at and you need to think about whether or not this is going to uh, sound the red alarm behind the scenes and, and uh, put a target on your back. How do they do that? I'm assuming just technology and data, they're, they're aggregating and, and much like an insurance company per, perhaps w would assess any form or fashion of risk in an auto insurance quote, they're probably doing something with a, a similar algorithm along these lines because I would, I would just think to be able to track all of that spending habits, uh, that, that has to be automated. That's very introspective, and you're exactly spot on with that. I would also additionally tell you that there's a, another factor of play that a lot of uh, Americans have no idea it even exists because they're familiar with the big three uh, credit agencies like Equifax, and Experian, and TransUnion, but they're not familiar with that there are about 40 other sub-agencies and uh, credit uh, data aggregators that are out there that uh, specialize in certain areas, like they know um, utility reporting, they know whether or not you pay your utilities on time, they know gaming, so there are actually uh, data aggregators out there that know how much you spend at casinos or whether or not you bet on the ponies or you're buying lottery tickets. They know, um, you know the, pretty much anything. They know your shopping habits, your history. You think about the Kroger Plus card or you know the little groceries cards or reward wow. cards. They, they know all of that information, and uh, they aggregate that data, and they resell it to the credit agencies. And then through that, um, they're uh, also reselling that data to credit card companies. Yeah. So the credit card companies know whether or not there are any anomalies that exist, um, you know, with your uh, ID number, like a member number, subscriber number. It's not necessarily Unreal. saying that uh, John Doe is doing this. It's just saying that, hey, this numerical ID number is exhibiting this, and so it'll slash a limit. And, and by the same token, they can also increase your credit limits. Yeah, um, no doubt. Uh, so the suggestion that you would have as we continue our conversation with uh, with Lee Kendrick, who's uh, running CreditUturn.com, uh, credit and debt expert, call your credit card company tomorrow. What can you do? You try to get a commitment from them for 30, 60, 90 days of X credit limit uh, to, to lock in something, APR. W what are some of the things that, that folks out there listening can do? Um, not really. They're not gonna. They're never gonna guarantee that you've got a specific limit, and you certainly don't want to sound like you're fearful of having your limit slashed. You know, because the first thing that you know that's gonna pop up is that hey, there's there's some concern on your part. So maybe we need to look and investigate. You know, this person a little bit more closely. That's one thing I would stay away from. But just again, you just want to look, you just want to ask yourself, is there anything I'm doing that looks risky that would cause any concern for a credit card company? And, and if there is, do something about it if you can. If you have the means to be able to pay down your balances or anything along those lines, you need to be doing that. And I will also add on that uh, just over here the last few days, there have been some announcements 
from credit card companies that they're doing away with their 0% balance transfer offers. Mm. So, you know, there are only a couple places that I know of right now that are doing that, and I can't remember which ones it is that have taken that away and which ones are still offering it. But, uh, you know, the, the time is almost up on that. Will those offers become available again at some point in time? Probably. Uh, but in the interim, they're really pulling back in a lot of different areas. So it's not just about your individual limits, but they're also looking at the offers that they're making and their, their point systems and that sort of thing. So there are some big changes that are coming along. Boy, Lee, uh, cash has never been uh, king, more so than, I guess, at this juncture in, in recent history, huh? You're exactly right. You know, and, and, you know, with that being said, obviously, uh, you know, there are a lot of people out there that hold the thought that, uh, you know, that uh, cash isn't necessarily the best place to have your money either, whether you need to have it in uh, gold or silver or other types of investments. And, and yeah, there's probably some truth to that. You know, it's a diverse time. I'm not going to say the sky is falling or anything. And I know that we're talking about the bad practices, the things that are happening right now with credit card companies. And, and I would, uh, tell anybody that's listening uh, right now to your show that, uh, that if they were the credit card company, put themselves in the credit card company's position, what would you do if you saw that, uh, hey, there's this big cash crunch, there's a lot of unemployment, there's the COVID concern, and, you know, all these factors rolling in there, you would probably want to restrict and pull back your uh, credit limits that you were making available to friends or family or coworkers as well. So, you know, just if you kind of put yourself in their position, you kind of have a little bit more understanding of why uh, or what is taking place right now. And just, you know, again, take a look at what, how you're using your cash and whether or not you could uh, put it to more effective use by paying down some balances or not. Lee Kendrick at credituturn.com. Interesting stuff. Uh, really appreciate your insight and your expertise, Lee, and uh, be well. We'll probably uh, phone you back here shortly uh, once we uh, do find out more information in the, in the coming months. That, that, that was a terrific segment, and I think our listeners are better for it. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for having me on. All right, that's Lee Kendrick, debt and credit expert. Again, credituturn.com. Credit, the letter U-turn.com. Stay with us. We'll be back.